Welcome back to another review by Mega Train Lover. Today we're having a look at the first of five locomotives um, or models which I got at the London Festival of Railway Modelling. And this particular one is from a manufacturer which I've never actually purchased a locomotive from before until now. As you can see, um, this particular engine is by Rapido, not Model Rail. It was a Model Rail, um, well, produced for Model Rail. But this is a Rapido model, and you can tell from the box that this is an LNER J70 060T. And if we turn to the side, it says it's a J70 Loco BR Early Emblem number 68225. And here's a picture of the not the real uh, not the real locomotive, not the exact uh, locomotive with this number, but basically a real J70. So yeah, uh, on the side you get a bit of information on the class if you'd like to pause and read. And on this end you just get, you know, authentically detailed model, um, just basically all the warnings. And on this side you get the same image. So, and it's a really, really nice sturdy box. Uh, the locomotive I have taken out and I've given it a run in, so it's not in the box. But basically a bit of information about the J70. Uh, these were a class of 12 so-called tram engines. Uh, built by the Great Eastern Railway to the design of James Holden and they were built between 1903 and 1921 at Stratford Works for use on the Wisbeach and Upwell Tramway uh, which I believe was in uh, Norfolk and they worked on the on the tramway uh, throughout their entire lives but they also went to work um, at the dockyards in uh, Great Yarmouth uh, all 12 of them passed into British Railways ownership. Uh, sadly though, uh, none of the examples have been preserved. All of them were withdrawn by 1955. Um, now, inevitably people will be commenting. I don't do Thomas stuff on here, but inevitably people will be asking or, or commenting. That's Toby the Tram Engine. That is Toby the Tram Engine. It is indeed the basis for Toby the tram engine. My particular model however does not have the side plates. It does have the cow catchers which I fitted because that comes in the detail pack um, but it does not have the side plates because uh, not all. some of them had the side plates removed uh, for maintenance uh, but yeah my one doesn't have the side plates but it doesn't matter because um, as you'll see it is a really really nice model. So yeah it is the basis for Toby the tram engine but that's as far as I'm going to talk about Toby because we're here to talk about the real J70 and this particular model. So uh, let's put the box to one side and get the locomotive right here. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. First thing I'm going to say, despite its size, which as you can see literally fits in my hand, it is quite heavy. And that's because the boiler is die cast. Uh, when I was opening up to DCC this, I saw that the boiler is die cast. Also, the running board here is die cast as well. But, oh my gosh, for such a small model, the detail is exquisite. Let's start at the front. You get. Um, when the model comes by default, you get a gaping hole here because basically you can switch between um, showing this open. So you get panels which show this in open state, but I fitted the closed ones uh, both front and rear. At the headlight I've, on top, I fitted that myself using uh, black tack, as you can see. But wow, I mean, these chains that you get here separately fitted that, that's just incredible I mean wow yeah and for such a small model it's amazing detail as mentioned the cow catchers uh, these do come as separate pieces uh, and I have fitted them you do actually get two versions you get one with without a hole and one with a hole so this one as you can see I went um, for one with the with the hole in the middle and that's simply because um, obviously I needed to fit the couplings, uh, but you can get the um, one without a hole for if you don't if you don't want couplings if you just want to you know display the model or if you only want to fit the coupling at one end basically or if you don't want to use the 
the coupling so it's up to you but yeah now uh, let's look at the the valve gear now because of the lack of side plates you can clearly see the valve gear which looks really really nice uh, this I'm not too sure what this is it's definitely part of the detail it's not a wire hanging out um, but I'm not entirely sure what that is but yeah it looks really really nice the glazing looks excellent you even get detail inside now if we now um, I'll just get my phone just shine some light onto it uh, there we go I don't want to get it too close because then it will interfere with the camera and then it just starts buzzing and stuff. Um, there, yeah. You can just about see. Basically, inside uh, is the boiler, of course. Uh, you can clearly see the you can see the chimney with what appears to be a spark arrestor on top. You also get a bell, which looks really nice. Uh, I don't know what this is. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Uh, but if you do know, please let me know. But inside, you get a fully detailed boiler um, and firebox. So the boiler, uh, so the boiler obviously runs along the length of the loco. Uh, the smoke box is at the front, and the, the firebox is at the back. But of course, this engine uh, had the ability to be driven from uh, both ends, uh, which is quite, yeah, it's, well, it's quite a, well, say revolutionary thing. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think. There, were, there was another tram engine before, which was an 040 um, version of this, which also had the same kind of design. So maybe it wasn't revolutionary, but of course it was very, very practical because the driver could be in either end, uh, basically. But, you know, you get a fully detailed um, interior, which is just excellent. Yeah, amazing. And, of course, sprung buffers on all four corners of the engine so yeah and you get the British, British Railways early emblem and on the front and back you get the number number 68225 separately fitted lamp irons as well um, yeah impressive very very impressive model I mean for, for its size literally that's the whole model it may not look like such on camera but it is a tiny model the amount of detail packed into it is just incredible, honestly. Wow, really, really impressed with it. Now, detail is one thing. What about performance? Let's see how she runs. So here we have the Rapido J70 on the track. And what we're going to do is we're going to select its number and watch her go. And away she goes. Wow. So she did accelerate quite fast. Oh, stopped dead on the points there for a bit. Um, I think that's down to the fact that it does have a coolless motor. Um, and I think it's the decoder as well. And I've put it up to number 10 speed on my gauge master control, which is just below halfway. So yeah, running really well. I love the I love the fact that because it doesn't have the side plate, you can see the the valve gear. If it goes, oh god, that's terrible focus. Not quite. Um, won't do. I love the fact that because you can't see because there are no side plates, you can see the valve gear just squiggling about there. Oops. Yeah, there you go. I just really look, that's such a nice touch. Let's uh, get a few shots of her passing. Oh, not sure why she's cutting out. I'll have to check. Yeah, other than the fact that um, uh, it's probably my track. I'll need to, I'll need to check it. But um, other than that, she's running really well. Yeah, really, really nice runner.
So just to conclude this video, this is a highly recommended model because I'm really, really impressed with it. Um, now, Rapido have done a rerun. Uh, they've not done any BR liveries yet, but they've done Great Eastern liveries. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just such a fantastic model. For its size, it's brilliant. And it's such a well-detailed model. And other than the fact that it cuts out on points a little bit, but that's because of its short wheelbase, um, other than that, it's a really, really nice performer. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.